guys, what is going on? Today I am on the boat with my entire family as well as we got two special guests today. We have my aunt and uncle from Michigan visiting today. This is my mom's sister, Aunt Patty and Uncle Gary. Hello. <laughs> Say hi, Mom. Hi. Are you excited? I'm very excited. We're gonna catch a shark today. <laughs> so what we are doing right now is we are catching ballyhoo. So that's how we are starting our morning, is catching our bait, and then we're gonna head out and hopefully catch some snapper today that's on the main menu, but we'll see how things go. So I thought today was going to be flat as glass. This entire week has been flat calm, but today is a little choppier than I thought it was going to be, but it's also very cloudy, so maybe if these clouds go away, it'll calm down, but. What are you doing, Dad? I'm trying to catch ballyhoo. I have threw the net three times and I got 21, so that's seven per cast. Brooke wants 36, so I guess I got a couple more casts to make. <laughs> so we got a chum bag in the water and we just keep shaking it. And we got some chubs in the chum slicks, some sergeant majors, some file fish. But then on the surface back there are the ballyhoo. So we're waiting for them to get close enough so that we can cast them. But I look what the old boy did while you weren't. Oh, oh, there, there. Look at what the old boy did. Okay, top of it. <laughs> Are you happy with that, Brooke? Yeah. Some fresh ballyhoo? How many did I get? Probably a dozen. All right, so we've been anchored up for only a couple minutes. We are in like 55 feet of water and Fisher's hooked up on a little bucktail. Are you just casting fish? Yeah, just casting straight out. What's it gonna be? A bonita? A little bonita? Aw, oh, look how cute! Do we want it or no? No, you can it's let it go, fish. A I just seen it. Okay, here. Give it to me, give it to me. I'll give it to my mom. Oh, so that was. Aunt Patty, Aunt Patty! Mom, that take was, her That one's got a, a, a big mackerel on it. Okay. Alright. Yes, yeah, hold that's on. Good. That's good. <laughs> Oh, wow, you got something good. I don't know, it might have came off. No, it's still there. Go Just ahead. keep Re reeling. Reel it good. Reel it, reel it, reel it faster. Here, um, come over here. Okay. On the other side of the boat. Keep reeling. Yes, keep reeling, perfect. Reeling. All right. So Lean against on. this right here. Yep, okay. Go that way. Keep reeling. A little bit faster. Dad, there you want to gaff oh, it? Yeah. It's Dad, you want to gaff it? This is what I want. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> It's, wait, 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 hold on one second. It's just wait under. right here. It's perfect. Just keep it just like that. Okay. Okay. There you go. Woo! 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 Man, that's Got a nice fish. It's a zero mackerel. Okay, let a little yeah. line out. Okay. So now just open that up. There yeah, there you go. go. Good job. This guy's got some big teeth, so no, watch your no. teeth. Oh, wow. A little different than the fish you're used to seeing, huh? Oh, no, no kidding. kidding. <laughs> it's not a perch. Huge, man. All right, so we got the second fish of the day. Technically, Fisher beat you just by a couple seconds, but <laughs> this is called a Ciro mackerel. And we have three different kinds of mackerel species. We have a kingfish, a Spanish mackerel, and a Ciro mackerel. You see the line going across this one down the wow. center? That's how you know when you have a Ciro mackerel. But this is a delicious eating fish. Wow. So we got dinner already. Yay! <laughs> Good job! <laughs> that was a little hectic, a little hectic there, um, getting this fish to the boat, but there we, we go. It. Good job. Yay! Okay. Oh, get a pick All right, Uncle Gary is on. Right. On a flat line, little piece of ballyhoo. We're about to see what it is. Looks like a what do you think tail. it is? What do you think? Yay! <laughs> we did not it! Too bad, not too bad, huh? That's a keeper. That's a cool, is it really? Yeah. Uh, That's a cool makes you fish. feel better, man. Yay! Uh, that felt Yellow good. Tail. That, really, that is a cool really fish. a cool looking fish. No man. kidding. Not like a perch. It's a little tornado. bit bigger than a perch. <laughs> Very close. He's they have to be 12 inches and he's like barely 12. We're not gonna keep him. We're gonna All keep right. him. Go. Yeah. It was fun. Sayonara. It was nice tail. knowing you. Give <laughs> you a good fight. Yep. Yeah. Good job. Oh, here. that was fun. It was fun. Thank you. Now we need a bigger one. I enjoy now it. Now we need right. a bigger one. Okay. All right, so we got a few different things going on here. We are fishing bottom with live ballyhoo or ballyhoo plugs, which means that the head and the tail are chopped off. 
And then we are fishing flat lines with some wire, like this. <laughs> Except our ballyhoo was very naughty and wrapped himself up. But this is going to be up top in case uh, sailfish or kingfish or mackerel or cobia comes by. We've already caught the mackerel and had a few other hits, right? Yeah. Just like that. So then we have two of those. We have two ballyhoo just on the surface, just swimming around with the wire rigs on them. And then we have a couple flat lines with that little tiny jig head that's like probably a quarter ounce with just chunks of ballyhoo and those are just drifting out into the current, but we don't really have ideal current today. The boat is basically sitting like, as you can see, the beach is right behind me. So you would rather have a strong north or south current and the boat be parallel to the beach so that the current is taking your lines away from the boat but that's not really happening today it's just a very very slow north current looks like uncle got gary's got another right. fish Yay! Hope, he's, uh, hope he's over what was it 12 inches yeah i'm thinking it's going to be the same kind of fish again you can tell yeah it'll be wow. bigger i don't care if it's the same size i don't care if it's smaller <laughs> <laughs> It's the same thing. Oh, oh that's, that's a nice one. one. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> that's, that's a keeper. Is it? Hey, yeah. I caught me a keeper. Okay, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Before you grab it, don't okay. grab it yet. Okay, now let me show you something about this fish. Its top is covered in spines. If you grab it bad, it's going to stab you. Ooh. Which I wanted to tell you the even first time. I grabbed it before you <laughs> got a chance. So the best place is to grab them underneath the belly. Yep. Perfect. You see this Good right job. here? Yep. That is oh, wow. really sharp. Yeah. And if that wow. gets into your finger, it might be there for days. Oh, wow. That was hooked perfectly. You yeah. want to measure them? Okay. Yeah. Please Let's be, see what we got Please this be a time. keeper. Please be a keeper. Oh, yeah. 14. 14? 14. There you go. Yeah. Hey. That has one cool looking fish right. there. Good job. I'd give you a kiss, but I don't mind. I would never kiss you again. Okay. Okay. Yay. Yeah, all right. How am I getting all my pictures then? I didn't yeah, catch them. You always make Yay. the picture look better, anyways. Aww. Okay. Aww. <laughs> that was a good, good one. Good job. Thank you. That style of fishing with that little jig and that bait, that's yellowtail fishing. So you caught two yellowtails. So oh, cool. That's your targeted species. And uh, then it's fun. Yeah, and it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, man. they fight good. Excellent. Great job. Go, Patty, go, Patty, go, Patty, go. <laughs> oh my gosh. You're going to catch a really cute fish. Whoa. A cute one? Yeah. Hello? I like it. It's a cute fish. Is it a perch? Oh my gosh, oh, what wow. is it? It's a moon fish. No, what is it? It's a, really okay, wait, don't, really don't. Here. Okay. Just pull your tip to put Victor's hand. Okay. What is it? It's a file fish. Oh, look at how cool that is. Oh, wow. wow. Look at how cool that is. You want to hold him? He's actually yeah. pretty easy to hold. To just put your, okay, yeah, just don't hold him right there. He's pretty docile. Hold put right your here. hand underneath. Yep, just like that. And sh show oh my through. gosh, it's cool. Hey, wow. Okay, do you see how you feel his material? Yes, it's, it's very cool. <laughs> material. It feels like, <laughs> it feels like material. <laughs> I, I'd like to wear them. It feels no like kidding, <laughs> I would like a pair of jeans like this. <laughs> oh, he's too cool. Look and at you. you. What is that? He, it's like alfalfa. <laughs> I got an alfalfa fish. You're too cool. Look at that blue. It's and he's changing so color amazing. since you're holding him. No way. Isn't that cool? Look at you. He's getting are lighter. a cool fish. He's a, cute, he's a cute fish. He is. Well, we don't keep these. We let them go. So you can let them go. go. Uh, just toss them out. Oh, oh, nice yeah. them. Just let them gently down. Bye bye. There you go. Oh, cool. Wow. Nice job. Yeah. Yay. He was That's amazing. Your first file fish. Well, fish are still my dad's bottom rod, and now my dad is flatlining a piece of ballyhoo, and he's hooked up. It's going to be a good fish, Dad. You were out there, huh? Yeah. You were in the Bahamas. Oh, it's going to be a nice yellowtail, Dad. Oh, no, it's not. It's a blue runner? No, it's a file fish. It's a, oh, it's, it's a, a queen, queen trigger. trigger. Oh, okay. queen oh trigger. my gosh, it's so beautiful and cute. Oh, it's great. Oh, so this oh. is a queen trigger fish. 
This is one of those fish where you press this and it won't go down. But if you put your finger here, <laughs> it makes it go down. You see that? You can't push it down and then you push this and then it goes down. That would be beautiful in an aquarium, wouldn't it? Look at that. Look at those tracers. No, Nobody has picked at his fins at all. They are just long and gorgeous. Alrighty. The buzzer beater fish is what it is. Buzzer beater fish on the ballyhoo. Just be ready to go around your dad. Yep, yep, if yep. it starts going that way. Oh, that's a good one. I don't think that's a, a zero. What would it be? We are so due for this fish too. We have lost yeah. so many. Don't jinx it, Victor. It's a tasty fish. Yellow a tasty jacks. fish? It's a tasty fish. Yellow jacks are tasty. What do you think it is, Jed? Give us a guess. Stingray. No! <laughs> I, it's, it's a 0.0% chance. <laughs> Stingray. <laughs> It was on the surface. Oh my god, it's a kingfish. It's a big one. Is it? Oh. No, it's a cobia. Oh, it's a no, cobia. It's a, it's a no, shark. It's a shark. Rick, that's actually a delicious eating fish. Is, is it really? Yeah, it's great. Here, I'll... Oh. She's not yeah. done yet. Nope. You could do wow. a catch and cook shark. They are so delicious. Hold this, Jen. It is crazy. Ooh, I wouldn't grab them like that. Talking to land shark outdoors. Wow. No kidding. Yay! Yay! Little little Come on, Patty. Little. Where is it? Yay! All right, okay. We caught a shark. Wow, Good cool. job. You did say at the beginning of the day we were going <laughs> to catch a shark. <laughs> Yay! Wow. What kind of shark is it? It's a sharp nose shark. So Jed just caught an Atlantic sharp nose shark. Very cool looking guy. And I think one of the coolest things about these guys is look at his eyeball. He's got such a cool little eyeball. And it almost looks like he's got a little kiss of snow on his body as well. These sharks will have a lot of spots on them throughout their life cycle. Sometimes they have more, sometimes they have less. Very cool little shark. And I'm pretty sure Brooke's gonna harvest this one for dinner, right? So we only caught that mackerel and that yellow tail to eat today. And then Jed just caught this shark and I've never actually done a shark catch and cook on my channel before, but this little sharp nose shark, these don't get very big. It's not like this, we're eating a baby shark. They just don't get very large. I don't know exactly how big they get. I'll put that information down below, but we're actually gonna harvest the shark, bring them home and eat them for dinner. So we're actually going to gut it right now because when you catch a shark, you want to immediately gut it. So that's what we're gonna do right now, but I'm not gonna show you guys that, but. I'll see you at the flay table to finish up cleaning it. All right guys, so we are back home. We got my brothers washing the boat. Victor and I are about to clean up the fish. And I'll be honest, I've never ever cleaned a shark before, but this guy has cleaned plenty of sharks. And I also don't plan on cleaning many sharks, so I'm just gonna let the expert do it. Like I don't really care to perfect my skills on it. Sharks don't have bones. They have cartilage. So yes. it makes it a little comp more complicated to play it yeah and their skin is very very tough so i'm gonna hand it over to vic and he's gonna show us how to clean the shark okay let's do it first thing i'm gonna do is actually cut off his head so right here behind the peck fin and i kind of follow it around to right about there do the same thing on the other side You know what, I'm gonna do something I normally don't do. I'm gonna fillet it from the inside out because like I said, shark skin is really tough. So I'm gonna get my knife on where I would think the spine is or the cartilage, right there. So tell us why we got it immediately. Okay. So you guys see that the gut cavity is off of this shark right now. And the reason we do that is because sharks are not like normal fish in the sense that they excrete their waste through their skin. So by doing so, as soon as the shark starts dying, 
it's gonna excrete all that ammonia and, and basically it pees out of its skin. And when it does that, you're going to be left with a really foul tasting meat if you don't gut it immediately. There you go. There's one half of the shark. And if you look here, see they don't really have like a, a spinal structure. It's kind of just, it's cartilage. So it, it feels like bone, it looks like bone, but it's a lot softer than it. Fully mature Atlantic sharp nose is only around like three and a half feet long. And I don't know if you guys can hear it, but it, their skin is like sandpaper. It will dull your knife like nothing else. Okay, here's the other side of your shark. You see how they don't really have a, a spine. There's no bone right there, like you normally would have with a regular fish. Not a lot of waste though. No, they have a, a very high yield, but they're also very dirty if you guys see. It's dark and gritty, that's from their skin. So we're gonna wipe off our table before we remove anything else. Okay, now it's just like any other fish, just line it up at the edge of the fillet table. Take your knife, push against the skin, and just separate the shark meat. And I like to take my left hand and trail right behind it, and just push the knife away from me. Just like that. And the reason I leave a really thin layer of meat right attached to the skin is because this is super fibrous and you guys can see how red it is. It's basically like one giant bloodline and there's only a tiny bit left in there, but since we're eating it fresh, it's okay. And the best part is, since there's no bones, there's no pin bones to remove, no rib cage, nothing. This is all yield for your shark. So we're gonna portion up our shark for Brookie's recipe. And the biggest thing that I've come to learn, or we've come to learn when it comes to cooking shark is, shark is pretty, a pretty tough protein. So you don't ever wanna give someone a really thick piece of shark. Keep it, underneath an inch when it comes to the thickness and you know about two inches in diameter you like those work mm -hmm. so if you did have a thicker piece of shark like a big bull or black tip you can cut this right down the middle and make them a lot thinner so now we're going to cover them in some buttermilk it's going to do two things well three things number one buttermilk is acidic fatty it's going to give it a real good flavor Number two, kind of take out any of that remaining shark, that like raw shark ammonia flavor. And number three, it acts as a binding agent to whatever coating you're gonna do for it. So we're just gonna cover them in buttermilk. And this is the fun part. I get to give my shark a little massage now at the filet table. Sorry, Brooke. You don't get the fun part. Shark nuggies coming up. Okay. I'm gonna fillet the mackerel something that I'm definitely more familiar with. And I think it'll actually be fun to compare the two fish tonight. Beautiful. Beautiful. So I don't think I mentioned it on the boat, but we actually just ate one of these fish as sushi the other night, but tonight it's gonna be fried. Okay, so just like the shark nuggets that Victor made, I'm gonna portion these up and I will see you guys in the kitchen. Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. So tonight we are cooking at my parents' house and we're going to be frying our fish outside on like the little burner thing. So the first thing we're doing is we're going to make our batter to fry our fish in. And right here we have 50-50 flour and cornstarch. So half flour, half cornstarch. And now we're gonna season this up. First thing, pepper. Next, salt. Garlic powder. Next, onion powder. Next is Old Bay. So here is our seasoned flour and cornstarch. And then now we're going to bread our fish. So these are actually the yellowtail. And I'm hoping that when this is all said and done, I'll be able to tell exactly what it is because I want Uncle Gary to really be able to taste the mackerel, the yellowtail, 
as well as the shark. He's a big fish lover, so I want him to be able to know that he's eating the yellowtail that he caught. Just giving these babies a nice coating. So I'm gonna do a bunch more. And then the shark as well, the same thing. I'm gonna just like drip off the excess and then dip it into the flour mixture. So I, after I finish doing this about maybe 50 more times, I will see you guys outside to start frying. All right guys, so we got the little burner with some oil that is nice and hot and the fish is ready to be put in. So here we go. Going in with the mackerel first. And we have a lot of people, so we'll see how many we can fit in here. It's always nice when you can feed everybody at one time, like one go around. Wow. That's that pretty nice, huh? That was all the mackerel. All we have wow. left is the two pieces of yellowtail, which we'll go, we'll do the next batch. Awesome. But that worked pretty well, huh? Mm-hmm. And the last touch, hit them with some salt. Shark is going in. Patty caught this delicious zero mackerel, and Brooke deep fried it. And um, what what a nice touch to come come back from fishing out in a, a beautiful day today. It was, wasn't hot, wasn't cold, it was perfect. So I really enjoyed myself, but what I really wanna to say tonight is not so much about my food review like I usually do. And I don't know, maybe Brooke will cut this out, maybe she won't like it. But <laughs> her, her last video was posted on my birthday. And I wanna thank everybody from my heart for all the nice happy birthdays, but not just the happy birthdays. There were so many comments from the heart that made me feel so good. You know, people appreciate Brooke and Victor's videos and appreciate my family. And it, I, I was so touched. I wanna say thank you. Look at that. Shark nuggies need salt. Alright. Time for fresh. Shark nuggies. They're gonna right. be hot, so maybe bust it open with your fork. Oh, definitely gonna be hot. Yeah. Man, that's good. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I, I haven't tried yet. I, I was I, told if it was I can, too uh, hot. If I can quote um, that millionaire in California, Judd Clampett, yeah, doggies. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I thought I thought this would taste like um, a slight, slight bit of a, ammonia, but you can't taste that at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a really good, d delicious, man. Uh, uh, no, no doubt. That's a first time shark eater right there. Yeah, <laughs> first it. time shark really eater. <laughs> so when I was catching that shark, everyone thought it was a cobia at first, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of glad it was a shark. Like this is on point. Like, it, Turned out super good, so mm. I'm, I'm glad it was what it was. So and compliments to the cooks. Yeah, all oh, by all means. Victor, Brooke, you guys are amazing, man. This is really uh, the reason we come to Florida. It's not to visit Debbie and Brooke. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> just joking. Just joking. The truth comes out. Really, really good. It's funny because we always talk about it and it's always true how when we, whenever we go fishing and it's a slow day, it always comes to like, oh, I guess we could take this. Oh, yeah, we need more food. We'll, we'll cook such and such fish, even though it's not what we wanted to. It's almost like we had to. And like the shark's a great example of like something that was kind of like, oh, we might as well take it. And it was one of the best things on the table. Yep. And no matter how many times we talk about it, we can't help ourselves. We're all always so used to having these fish in our mind that are the good fish and then the fish you don't target. Mm -hmm. 
But as long as you prepare right, you can really make a good meal out of almost anything you catch out there. The shark was hands down top, top of the night. It was so, so good. Um, shark is just a delicious thing. Like, you might think it would be weird or you might think it has a weird taste, but the sharp nose shark was absolutely delicious. So I give it a 10 out of 10. <laughs> yeah.